Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show, where truth matters. You can find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Don't forget the podcast, by the way, thenewscasters.com and our radio station, icradio.media. This is where you can find AP Sedum on Fridays, Friday football at 4. So good to be with you, AP. How, how did your weekend go? Hey, very well, Donna. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we're just watching some of that basketball, Donna. We're right in the middle of it. We're wrapping it up very soon because you're going to have the SEC men's tournament uh, be coming up here in the middle of the month in Nashville, Tennessee, and then the women, they hold that usually in South Carolina. So we have some good SEC teams. Uh, b- big game this weekend probably was Alabama at Kentucky. Alabama was at the top of the conference facing Kentucky, a team that is improving weekly. And they scored 117 points, Donna, against Alabama. I think the last time Alabama gave up that many points was 1970 against the University of Southern California, uh, 122 points. So Kentucky had a fabulous day shooting the ball. I think it ended up being over 60%. And Alabama scored their average, which is in the 90s. But defensively, they totally collapsed. So uh, Kentucky looks sensational. Yeah. So why is Kentucky doing right? Yeah, Kentucky is one of the top teams scoring, Donna, just like Alabama. The, the, it's really uh, nice to have two SEC teams in uh, the tops in the scoring. But defensively, they uh, they played better this game. Even though they let Alabama score the 90-something, and it didn't matter because they had the 117. So when Kentucky can play better defense and they're scoring at that clip in the 90s, 80s, high 80s, 90s, they're going to have a good chance to win. So I think it was the defensively, the combination of the tremendous offense, you know, Alabama not playing much defense and Kentucky playing pretty good defense for that um, that game. They're playing at home. So it was important to them. So, yeah, Kentucky right now, Donna, they're looking at a 9-5 and five record in the conference. 19-8 and eight is their record. So uh, same as Alabama. Alabama is 19-8 and eight now and 11-3 and three in the conference. But, yeah, good, some good basketball in, um, in the SEC this year. But, you know, people are saying maybe it might be the best, best conference in the men's, and they don't normally say that about the mm-hmm. SEC. They're thinking, you know, ACC with all the Carolina schools and Duke and – uh, you know, maybe the Big Ten, uh, but they're saying maybe this year the SEC, the best conference. Sometimes they've been saying the Big 12, Donna. So that, that's impressive mm-hmm. that the SEC is making strides on the men in the men's basketball. Has something to do with that good old country sunshine, too, I think. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> that, that always helps. <laughs> maybe, it always helps. What can you say about the Kentucky, about the coaches there? They all seem to be on the same mind. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, John Calipari, he's been at this a very long time, Don. He's one of the few coaches. He had uh, his team from Massachusetts in the Final Four. He had Memphis in the Final Four. He's had Kentucky in the Final Four. So he knows how to win. He knows how to acquire talent. And, you know, maybe Kentucky, maybe they get to the Final Four this year. It all depends on your your the bracket and your seating and your matchups. Uh, but like any sport down in basketball is a game of matchups. Maybe you can play well against a certain team because you're, you're taller, maybe you're faster, maybe you have more offense. It just depends on the matchup. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Now, who does Alabama face up with next game? Oh, oh yeah. Um, I, I can't remember. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, Florida coming up. Um, I think that's a home game, and I think it's at Texas A&M. I think those are their next two games, if I recall, uh, Donna. So they have a good chance to maybe be at the top of the conference or um, at the very least uh, be the top four so you get a double bye, Donna. You know, you don't have to play on Wednesday or Thursday. You get to play on Friday. So you would have to win Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to win the championship of the conference. So you're trying to get in that top four to get that double buy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm glad you mentioned the days of the week because Mike sent a question about um, yeah. the teams that are playing throughout the week. And right. he says, what are your thoughts about that? Does that hamper a team yeah. when they're playing in, the say, the middle of the week versus on the weekends? 
Right. Yeah. You know, some once in a while on the schedule, Donnie, you do get a break during the middle of the week and you just play that Saturday game. Uh, I'm not sure which teams this particular week have the uh, um, are, are playing just on Saturday, but sometimes down you you're needing that rest because you've been traveling. Maybe you've been on the road two, three, four games, something like that. So it's nice to have that break in the middle of the week. So yes, it can affect you if you just play the game on Saturday because you have all week. You, you kind of like I always say, subconsciously, if nothing else, you're thinking I have a break. So mentally, I'm getting prepared for a Saturday. I feel confident. I know I want to be rested. So it helps in the process to try to win a ball game. Yes. I, I think so, too. But there's just something about traveling. I know when Phil yeah. and I go on trips, we flew out to San Antonio this, this last year. And it was just we were walking all over the river walk and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But, but being on the plane wears you down for some reason. Yeah, maybe it's that air down or something. I don't know. I, I agree with you. Yeah, and I think because you're confined and you're, I think maybe you're a little, sometimes you can be a little uptight and that and that extra uh, adrenaline uh, wears you down. Yeah, using that extra adrenaline, yes. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure the coaches try as much as they can to plan so they're, you know, so the players can get a little bit of rest. That's yeah. just tiresome. Yeah, then they get the charter flights, the SEC teams, uh, the men and the women. I think all of them do. So it, it's a good travel situation for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's Auburn doing this? What did they do last week? Yeah, yeah. Auburn, you know, they, they played Georgia. They won that ball game. So Auburn right now looking at number 14 in the country. Uh, the polls coming up here pretty soon. 10 and 4 in the conference, 21 and 6, Donna. So they're, they could be one of the top four teams and get that double buy. You know, Bruce Pearl, he's an excellent motivator, usually has his teams ready to play, especially defensively. I mean, because we, we all know that shooting is a game-to-game -game situation uh, if you have a hot night. So, But his teams always usually can rebound and play defense, uh, you know, give effort. Even if they don't have the tallest team, the best rebounding team, they're always very aggressive on both sides of the ball. So Auburn's in a good, good spot. And, uh, you know, they've been to the Final Four now. They're the only team from Alabama ever to be in the Final Four. So they they made historical strides with that program under Bruce Pearl. Let's talk a few about a few other teams as well. I know we've, we've um, kind of touched. Well, how about Tennessee? What's going on with them? Yeah, you know, Tennessee, excellent team, 11-3 and three right now. They're tied with Alabama at the top. Uh, they're 21-6. and six. Uh, you know, they have that George Connect, the transfer from Colorado State. Donna, he is scoring at a high clip um, in the mid-20s. He has a lot of 30-point games. And then that was a great addition to the team because uh, Rick Barnes, usually his teams are very good defensively. Sometimes they struggle on the offensive side. But now they have that top score, one of the best players in the country production-wise. Uh, so that that was a key acquisition during the offseason. Yeah, Tennessee is in a in a good spot. Um, they're probably going to be one of the four teams that has a double buy as well. Mm -hmm. That's not nationwide. What's going on with the rest of the conference? Yeah, you, we have uh, at the top, Donna, we have Connecticut that was the last poll. Houston, uh, they're a very good team. Uh, Purdue, number three, Arizona, and then Tennessee was number five at this point. So there's an SEC team in the top five. But those other four are ahead of them. But but that doesn't matter, Donna, um, you know, because you, you have to play your way to the Final Four in Phoenix. But you want a high uh, seating if you can to make the games as easy as you as easy as you when you progress in the tournament. So but those those four teams, UConn, Houston, Purdue, Arizona are right above Tennessee at number five. Mm -hmm. UConn has always been pretty good, too, haven't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they've won. Donna, this will give you an indication of the uh, level of their program. They've won championships under three different coaches now. So when you can win under three different coaches, and it all started with Jim Calhoun. Uh, he's won three, I believe, three or four. Then you had Kevin Ollie win the championship. Then last year was uh, Danny Hurley. So that's three different coaches have won at the University of Connecticut. So they have a they have a program, Donna. Um, you know you can win there. It's, it's like the teams in football – who have won with uh, different head coaches. They have an excellent program. Mm -hmm. It's not just a well, coach at this point. Phil is from Houston. You know that. So Phil wanted to know if you could just elaborate just a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On Houston. Yeah, Houston. yeah. The proud those Texans are. 
Right, yeah, Houston, yeah, they had a big game against Baylor uh, on the weekend at Baylor, and they won that ball game, and Calvin Sampson, his team's are hard-nosed on it. They normally don't score a lot of points. They keep the the scoring 60s, 50s, you know, maybe 70s at times, but they're going to rebound and play defense, tough defense, and that travels well in a tournament. Uh, you know, you get the unusual night where maybe they're really hot, it's going to be tough to beat Houston uh, because you know they're going to play good defense and rebound. If they have a hot shooting night, that is going to be very difficult to match that intensity intensity on both sides of the the ball. I got to say, I love Houston. We traveled out there um, after yeah. we got married. We almost moved out there, and right. um, so Phil said, "What's the first thing you think of?" We got off the plane. We were try we're walking around, <laughs> you know, looking right. at the side of the thing. I said. Where are the mountains? <laughs> <laughs> right. I right. Could see it was office buildings. And that was just about it. But anyway, yeah. it's a nice place to go. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it'd be getting back to Houston. It'd be nice to see Houston in that final four. Um, I re- remember that program when I first started watching basketball and Elvin Hayes and Don Chaney and Coach Guy Lewis. You know, I was a, he had that towel he would wave and, then, of course, came along Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler in the mid-'80s, Fly Slamma Jamma. So they've always been fun for me to watch that team, and uh, I'd love to see them. I'd love to see them in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. That, that'd be awesome, absolutely. Now, who else are you looking at um, out in the Texas area? Oh, yeah. Well, in the Texas area, um, I, I'm not sure how Texas is doing this year in basketball. You know, they had a good program, new coach. I'm not uh, hearing not, anybody except Houston. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my inclination at the moment, that Houston is a team to watch in the state of Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't paid attention to too many other teams, but that I'm watching that Houston team because, you know, they've been very good in the last three or four years with uh, Kelvin Sampson. They've become very close um, in the Final Four uh, recently, but – uh, it would have been fun for them to be there last year because it was in Houston, the Final Four, but they didn't they didn't make it. So I think they're really trying to get there this year in Phoenix, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and cut to a commercial break, and we'll be right okay. back in just a minute. Everybody hang in there. Queen City East Car Sales has been serving drivers in the Northeast Alabama area for years with a quality selection of late model used cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. On top of our extensive selection and competitive prices, we offer professional auto financing services for used car buyers of all credit levels. Whether you've just begun your search or you're ready to secure your next vehicle, at Twin City Used Car Sales, you will drive away with the vehicle of your dreams. The sales and finance staff at Twin City Used Car Sales looks forward to serving you, and you can apply for financing online before your visit to our used dealership in Gadsden, Alabama. Check us out on the web at TwinCityUsedCars.com or go by our location at 901 First Avenue, Gadsden, Alabama. We sincerely look forward to serving you. Limon's Mexican Restaurant, located in Henniger, Alabama, and voted Best Mexican Restaurant of the Cobb County, Alabama 2020, we're here to serve you with authentic Mexican cuisine. Order easily online by going to limonsmex.com or call 256-657-3999 to place your order. We're open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Whether you're celebrating a cozy date night for two or a celebration for a crowd, at Le Mans, you'll love our atmosphere and friendly servers. Thank you for dining with Le Mans Mexican Restaurant. At Liberty Bank, we're all about community. Whether it's to help with a charity fundraiser or help families in need, toys at Christmas or a local football team, we're here for you. You see, we realize the importance of family. Sometimes it's to build a new home or necessary home repairs. We're here for you. 
If you like the feel of a small town bank with all the conveniences of a big city bank, we're here to serve you. You will find us at any of our convenient locations in DeKalb, Marshall, Etowah, and Blunt Counties in North Alabama. You can call and speak with any of our friendly staff at 256-659-2175 or check us out on the web at libertybankal.com. And thank you for your support of our community. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Jeff McCurdy of the McCurdy Law Firm has been a public service of this area for over 10 years. McCurdy, a member of the Henniger City Council, serves as prosecutor for the town of Sylvania and was named public defender for the city of Rainsville. The McCurdy Law Firm is located at 17326 Alabama Highway 75 in Henniger to better represent his Jackson and DeKalb County clients. If you need to be represented by a true public servant with proven success, call Jeff at 256-996-8701 or send a private email to McCurdyLawFirm at gmail.com. No representation is made that the legal services performed is greater than the legal services performed by other lawyers. The Hatter Cafe and Country Inn is nestled in the northeast corner of Alabama the Beautiful in the delightful town of Mentone. We're located on top of scenic Lookout Mountain near Little River and DeSoto State Park and located only five minutes from shopping and restaurants. There is also a nearby community walking path and golf course. We welcome everyone through the doors and we are committed to outstanding service for all guests. At the Hatter Cafe and Country Inn, we invite people from all walks of life to come and get away from it all, enjoy the open spaces, treetop views, fresh, clean air, and experience southern hospitality at its finest. We look forward to hosting you. To reserve a special event, or if you would love a special getaway at the Country Inn, you can call us at 256-634-2018. Good afternoon. We're back. My name is Donna and I am your host of Donna's Edge Talk Show. Thank you so much for watching every day, Monday through Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. Central as we get to ride home with you in the afternoon going on the radio. I see radio.media television channel 182 on Charter Communications Abundance Television, which is found on Roku, Apple TV and Amazon Fire. And don't forget the podcast, the newscasters Come. I want to say a very special thank you to the Chamber of They air the show in, in the lobby on this huge screen TV every single day. <laughs> and they're Friday from 1 to 3. So thank you guys for, for letting us be part of your schedule as well. I have AP Sedum with me right now. Now he is, uh, I think you've been labeled as the best talk show host as far as um, football, <laughs> basketball, anything sports. So thank you for everything you do to bring insight to the station here. Definitely appreciate it. And then you also are host of another talk show, AP and Kelly, as we see it. What's going on there? What happened last week? Yeah, every Friday, Donna, we want to thank you so much for being on IC Radio every Friday, 4 p.m. Central. And we had a lot of a lot of fun last week. We uh, discussed Auburn and um, Auburn football and Auburn basketball with Richard Silva from the Montgomery Advertiser. And then, Donna, we also spoke about two coaches coming over, two football coaches coming over from Baylor University. Um, We talked with the Waco Tribune Herald writer out there. And it was interesting, Donna, because one of the coaches, he arrived at at Baylor in December. So he never did coach there. And then he came to Alabama. He switched schools right away. And then the other coach was there for a year. And it was an inside linebackers coach. uh, he had coached at Auburn and Florida and I think Ole Miss and Mississippi State. So um, we had some interesting comments about those two coaches uh, coming over from Baylor. Like I say, one was at Michigan State, came to Baylor in December, never did even coach there, just was there for a couple of months or two, whatever it was, and coming over to Alabama now, part of the new staff with Kaylin DeBoer. So you have a Richard Silver from Montgomery Advertiser and um, – we had uh, the Waco Tribune Herald writer speak about the two coaches coming from Baylor. 
So we had a lot of fun. Then we discussed the basketball. We discussed um, some of, we're always discussing that NIL and the transfer. And Donna, I think this week, we we'll probably have to discuss maybe that court storming. I don't know if you've seen yeah. some things happen in the basketball court. End of the game, the home team is rushing the floor, which is fine. But there's a probability that you might have an injury, and they've had some with the opposing players. And Don, you could have something happen to your own fans as well. So they've got to shore up this court stormy business. We all love to be excited and have that enthusiasm, but somebody's going to get trampled, Donna. We've seen that happen through the years. I remember Wisconsin football. They were pushed up against the fence, and the oh. people got injured. And so yeah, they have to do something now to curb that court storming. And this upcoming football season and as well, it, it's, it seems it's more frequent now that people are getting injured. So, you know, we, yeah, I think they have to do something with the security. They find them big money, but it doesn't seem to deter. And you have to, not like anything else, how can you change a situation, change the behavior? You have to educate your fans. You have to be announcing that during the game. Look, we want all your enthusiasm, but please, we have to stay off the court. We're going to do everything we can to keep you off the court. We, we really mean business now because we don't want anyone to be hurt. It's for, it's, and it's for your safety. It's in your interest. Mm -hmm. You have to make it where it's in their interest to stay off the court. Because yeah, it's, we want to it's save you team. because we love you as our fans. Right. That would be yeah. great, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's that. not that we don't want the, the you to be excited about the team winning and supportive, but people are getting hurt now. It's mm -hmm. it's not a good situation for the for the, our fans and the school and the reputation. It's not good for our bank account either for our athletic department because we're having to pay these huge fines, which uh -huh. means we're, maybe we're, we're not doing something for you. So mm -hmm. they've got to educate them now. It's got to be a huge push and uh, advocacy for We love for you to cheer for the team, but please stay in the stands. We, we'll, we'll let you stay until the coaches show is done and the players come out to be on the coaches show and cheer mm -hmm. for them when they come out. But please, we can't have people storming the court yeah keep the excitement but stay off the court <laughs> so I mean, yeah. and i'm with you i'm glad people are really excited about it but when it yes, comes to the danger of people yeah. you can't, you can't yes no it's a serious danger nobody wants to the next day be um have, having regret that someone was injured and hurt mm -hmm. uh i mean i don't just mean Let's say a broken arm or something. I mean, trampled and serious injury. Okay. So they're going to have to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a, an injury where I broke my arm when I was about 14 years old. That was not fun. So, <laughs> yeah. Made, yeah, that's not fun. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I said breaking your arm because I know that can be healed normally, but that's not fun either. Not fun to break any bone. Uh, you know, you've done that. I've done that. That's not, that is not fun. You know, AP, I have a broken fingernail and that doesn't feel good either. <laughs> so Correct. You go. Right. Right. We want to stay intact. Every part Absolutely. of our body. Right. That's right. Fingernails yeah. and all. Fingernails and all. But, okay. So we're getting close to the end of the basketball season. What are some prize, some surprises you experienced this year? Oh, yeah. John, I just want to bring up the, the on the women's side as well. We still have just the two teams uh, on the women's side. In the um, top 25 at the moment, LSU's on, I mean, LSU, USC, I say USC, that's University of South Carolina, undefeated 27 and 0, 14 and 0 in the conference. LSU, number 13, 11 and 3, 24 and 4. And there's a few teams down to getting some votes as well. Mississippi State had two votes in the AP uh, poll, and Tennessee had one. Uh, Mississippi State right now is 7 and 7, 20 and 9, and Tennessee is 9 and 5, 16 and in 10 and then some of the other top teams in the women's Ole Miss, Alabama and Vandy, they're um, respectively 19 and 7, 21 and 8 and 20 and 8. So maybe they can make their tournament as well. And then the surprises. Um, I, I think the fact that South Carolina, we always you know, on the men's side mm -hmm. projected for last time. Just think about that. I mean, I don't mean 13th, 12th, 11th. I mean, 14th in the league and they're projected and here they're having this. Uh, outstanding season. Uh, South Carolina, number 20 at the moment, 22 and 5, 
10 and four in the conference. So they, they have to be, I'm thinking that's one of the biggest, it's got to be the top two or three surprises in the country, in the country down in South Carolina men's. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. fabulous for South Carolina. Of course, the women are number one and the men are in the top 20. So that's, they're loving their basketball in South Carolina, Columbia. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I love to see someone come from behind and just make it all the way and surprise everybody. So what is this doing to the opponents? Because, you know, the start of the season, it was like, oh, no big deal. And now they're taken very seriously. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had a big victory, 17 points over Kentucky and some other games. And uh, so uh, when you're looking at the schedule as an opposing coach and thinking, well, we can, if we play South Carolina twice, minimum, we're going to beat them one time. But now – that might be a loss on your schedule. So that changes uh, the perspective for the other team when they're trying to get all these wins to make the tournament. So, yeah, that that's a big difference. But good for South Carolina to be uh, so outstanding in basketball and the men's and the women's. Of course, the women's side, we know that they're, they're the probably, I would say, prohibitive favorite to win on the women's side, the championship, I would say. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Are you hearing any rumors or anything about the? And let's talk football just for a few minutes, especially in Alabama yeah. with the new right. coach and what? What are you hearing about that? Any yeah, buzzwords? The, yeah, the, you know, I, I would say this, Donna, for the people who follow Alabama, that some of the coaches they had on the staff momentarily they left to be with the Seattle Seahawks. Some of them went other places, but I would say, Donna. Your concern should be who is retained on the staff and then who joins the staff, because that's reality. It's not who we might have had. It's who is going to be on the staff moving forward. So I always tell people when they're looking at recruiting, not only players, but coaches, it's not the people that you supposedly, quote unquote, lost. It's the ones that you retain or join your program. That's going to be the difference maker, because. Um, if they're good, then you'll be fine moving forward. So until you get somebody's name on the dotted line in recruiting, uh, you didn't lose anybody, right, Donna? You thought you might have had them. They were projected to co- attend your school or sign on the dotted line for you, but until you get them. But it's the ones that you that come to your school that make the difference. It's not the ones that you lose, but the ones that are in your program, they're going to help you win. That's what's important. I think so too. And it's like running a business. It's better to go on ahead and weed out the ones that are not going to be the team players anyway. Right. And, and it's just, you know, it could be for various reasons. It's not they're bad yeah. people. They just found somewhere else they'd rather go. But I'd rather right. go ahead and get my team in place now than to That's wait right until early. Yeah, early. You get that done early. You want people who would like to be a part of your program, coaches, players. And Donna, we know this spring we're going to have a, a, another uh, infusion of talent around the country because people are going to leave again in the spring for that little window of the transfer portal. Because I think it's like, usually it's, I think it's two weeks or so. This is a short time. I think it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Hey, okay, people, we've got to go. What would you like to say to the folks before we leave? Yeah. Just enjoy this basketball in the SEC. It, it's, it's been a long time coming Donna. They were promoting basketball for years, having all the games on TV. So the recruiting becomes easier. They've got the top coaches now. And it's high-level competition, not only in the league, but nationally. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. AP, thank you so much for being on the show. Can't wait hey, to see you. you or can't wait to hear you and Kelly on Friday, <laughs> football Friday at 4. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. We'll see you in a few minutes with another awesome guest.